All right, Ethan Skolnick for five on the floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network here at the practice facility for the Miami Heat at Kasaya Center. I've got Brady Hawk. I've got Alex Toledo. We just conducted a bunch of interviews that are going to go up on five on the floor to spend some time with Josh Richardson. Do want to handle sort of the overall vibe of the day, though. A little bit of a strange media day based on what we've been kind of dealing with, what the players have been dealing with for the past couple of months, whether it was Dame Lillard or Drew Holiday or who was going to get traded here. And it turns out that the roster is pretty close to what it was last season with a few changes. Of course, the news today is going to be about Jimmy Butler's hair um, and him going emo. I'm not really sure exactly what that was, but I do think that it actually had a purpose. Uh, which is beyond just the fact that Jimmy wants that to be the picture that's on the national TV broadcast all year, and he's going to be upset if it isn't. But I do think there was a point to loosening things up here a little bit. Um, it's been tense because a lot of players that were here today didn't know if they were going to be here. We talked to Haywood Highsmith. He's like, I was just glad it was over because he might have been included in a trade. So I did take away from a certain degree that Jimmy at least trying to set the tone here and also, of course, saying we're going to be there in June again in the finals, regardless of what everybody thinks, and this time we're going to win it. I know not everybody takes him seriously at this point, but if there's somebody you should take seriously on the heat who says that, uh, that's that's tr you know that would be the one guy. What was your takeaway beyond Jimmy today, Brady? I think my big takeaway was that aside from the top three guys, it was Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Tyler Hero, that camp is just going to be an open fight for roster spots in terms of just uh, you talk to everybody today and everybody's pretty much saying, I don't care if I come off the bench or if I start. Whatever they want to give me, I'll play. That's pretty like the motto between everybody. Uh, I asked Spolcher earlier today about kind of Jovic's playing time po possibly. Uh, and the motto seems to be for both him and Hawk is like, go earn your spot. Like you're going to have an opportunities in camp. Uh, I do think it probably will end up being love to start, but I think it's just interesting to see that uh, kind of motion of them just kind of fighting for those spots, kind of being put in that range. That's kind of what they've always done. Even with Tyler last year, they told Tyler, go earn your spot. So you think they're not going to do it with a guy that didn't play last year? 100%. So I just think uh, they do have a general buy-in, even though what we've been talking about with them maybe – needing to be a little bit looser, but they do have a buy-in, I guess, what their roles potentially could be. And to that point, I mean, the players, again, I don't think there's any certainty for them because they didn't even know what the roster was going to be here. We talked to Josh Richardson, and he's like, we're talking about playing point guard. He's like, I hadn't even really thought about it because he's like, I don't know who the point guard is. And we, we should say, too, the only guy who did not speak today was Kyle Lowry, so we didn't hear from him. Uh, I want to go to Tyler Hero with you, though, because there was a certain defiance about Tyler, as there tends to be. He follows everything. He's had a sense of humor about it. Uh, but he was pretty damn clear that he's ready to go. He said specifically, I'm ready to roll. What do you expect from him starting out? I'm expecting for him to come out firing. Like, I think he already had the chip on his shoulder because of the way that things have ended, not only last year where he wasn't able to play, you know, because diving for the ball, doing everything that he'd always talk about, but just the year before, not be, you know, getting injured in the playoffs as well. So you add that and you add, you know, another summer of trade rumors for him and, like you said, he's been he, he's had a sense of humor about it. You know, he said he survived another summer, all that, that he's going to buy a Dame jersey. So I think he has the right perspective on it. And I also think he's going to use it. I think he's going to channel channel that energy um, and kind of, you know, just play with that chip on his shoulder. Like I said, I think he's going to come out firing. And I wouldn't be surprised if he started the season off as like their leading scorer, especially with the way that Jimmy and Bam kind of handle things where they're not necessarily trying to get like the most shots up. I think Tyler's going to. I think he's going to try to show people how good he is and how good he is at what he does. So, you know, even if you still might have some defensive concerns about him, I think he's going to come out and, you know, look better at the things he's already great at. I, he's very straight into the point, very calm guy. But um, I think it's obvious that he's going he's gonna to use that for, you know, the betterment of his own game. And it's obvious, obviously, at this point what the theme of this season is going to be because Eric Spolsch said it about ten times at his press conference. We're one of those teams – not declaring that they're going to win a championship. I will say this is different than a team coming off an Eastern Conference championship. I've covered a bunch of those because the Heat have won a bunch of those, and typically there's an arrogance to those teams. The only exception was kind of 14-15 after LeBron left, uh, but there isn't with this. It feels kind of – I know people are going to say they're running it back, and to a certain degree they are at the top end of the roster, but there is a freshness about some of the young players that are competing for spots. We'll see how that plays out, but I think the most critical thing for this team early is going to be the leadership, and you heard guys talk about that today about Bam needs to be more of a vocal leader. Udonis Haslam's not here anymore. 
to put guys in their place and make sure that they're pointed the right direction. And did that always work? No. Was Udonis frustrated at times? Last year, for most of the season, he absolutely was. But you have to fill that void. So whether it's going to be, again, Kevin Love or Bam taking more of that role or Jimmy with humor, uh, they're going to have to set the course for this team because if they get off to a bad start, all they're going to be hearing about are the players who are not here instead of the players who are here, and they got to keep that stuff in line. So the coach certainly knows how to do it. He said, again, we're one of those teams. We believe they're one of those teams. Are they as good as Milwaukee or Boston? Well, they weren't in the regular season last year, and they ended up beating both in the postseason. So we'll see what happens. Ethan Skolnick for Five on the Floor. Make sure to check out all the other content on the channel, of course, on the podcast feeds, and join us on Playback. Good day, everybody.